Now happy to welcome into the huddle Seattle Seahawks tight end Noah Fan. Noah, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing much. Just got out of my lift. Love it. Well, we got some big news, I guess, before you got you got on here. Leonard Williams was just traded to the Seahawks. So I, I'm not going to ask you specifically about Leonard Williams, but coming off of a win, first place in the division, just how awesome is it to see your GM go out and make these kinds of moves to just show how much confidence he has in this group to win it all? Yeah, no, I think it's a, a super good a good thing. Um, obviously, Leonard Williams is a great player. We played against them, against the Giants. Um, scouted against him, all those things, had to prepare for him. So I uh, got a lot of respect for him as a player. Definitely super excited to have him. Um, it's it's definitely, you know, good coming off of a win, first first and foremost, but uh, continue to build our roster to try to make this run and, and win as many games as possible is, is a, a cool feeling to be a part of. So I'm excited. You talk about uh, the roster. You guys were suited up in some pretty awesome uniforms this week, the throwbacks. What do you make of them? Because, I mean, to me, it's some of the nicest jerseys I've ever seen in the NFL. Yeah, no, uh, I loved them. It, it was so cool to be a part of that and uh, to be able to wear those. I wish those were our full-time jerseys, uh, to be honest. They were, they were uh, pretty special to wear, and I love the color scheme and, and all of that. So uh, I'm excited to get to wear them one more time this season. Where do they rank as far as, like, your favorite Seahawks jerseys go? I feel like a lot of people love, like, the lime green ones, but for, for you wearing them and, and seeing where they stack up, where does it go? Yeah, in yeah. so the throwbacks are number one for me. I was a big fan of the gr all gray. Um, mm -hmm. I love the gray unis. Uh, I thought those were really cool. So um, I like those. I like the throwbacks, the grays, and then probably the lime greens after that. So those are, those are my rankings. Great uniform setup. That is cool. And I – going to stick with maybe just things outside of the game, but I watched a mic'd up of you against LA last year and you're talking, you guys were all talking about just some of the celebrities you see at games. So is that yeah. something you guys are always watching for? Maybe not just in LA, but like it's things you notice and who, what was the celebrity maybe you were most excited to see on the sidelines at a game? Yeah, I think we just, we kind of joke around about it. I totally forgot I was mic'd up at that point. I was just <laughs> talking to my buddies. But um, it was, it's fun. It's it's a cool experience, right? Because a lot of the time you're just playing the game. You don't realize that people are watching you for entertainment. So um, it's cool to see, you know, different celebrities and stuff come out to the game. At that time, it was Kim Kim Kardashian that was at the game. So it was just funny and just like joking around with my buddies. But uh, we always have fun just kind of seeing who's at the game and, you know, try to perform and put on a good performance for them. Awesome. I, I want to talk to you about uh, the tight end position because I think in recent years it's it's seen a bit of a boom and I think George Kittle and Travis Kelsey, guys like that, are doing a great job marketing it with the whole you know mm -hmm. tight end you thing. Um, but I also think it's still an underappreciated position because you run, you catch, you block, you really do it all. What yeah. is something that I think people don't quite realize about, about the position and, and why it's so important? That's a, that could be a long answer. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that, like you said, the tight end position is getting more respect as we go. Um, I think the tight end position is asked to do a lot. I think you have to be able to run routes. You have to be able to be in pass protection. You have to be able to block in the run game. Um, all of those things, you have to know the offense conceptually and to really understand um, where the offensive coordinator is trying to go as a whole and being a part of all those things. So it's a lot to know. Um, and, you know, there's some tough tasks, especially like you're having to deal with some of the really it is the best players in, in the NFL on the edge. Right. Those are the most athletic, biggest guys um, that can run and, and do all the crazy stuff that you see all the highlights on. So dealing with those guys on the edge and, um, you know, making the making the best of it and, and getting those wins on the edge to help your team. So um, I think as we keep going, people are starting to appreciate the position more, uh, which is really cool to see. Um, and getting getting uh, getting some highlights in the passing game is pretty cool too. So uh, that's that's something that's uh, becoming more appreciated. I think um, you know having a tight end that can you know get down the field and catch passes and and uh, open the field up for your receivers on the outside is something that's huge. So uh, I'm excited to see where it keeps going. We have a former uh, Canadian of, of ours, former Seattle tight end Luke Wilson. So we watched him a lot as a as a Seahawk as well, which is yeah. it's just really cool to hear about the position. He always talks about Pete Carroll as well, who I'm sure appreciates the tight end position. When you were traded to Seattle, was there 
something that just stood out from meeting Pete Carroll the first time? Or is there a story about like his competitiveness? Because we, we always see these videos of just, he's playing quarterback at practice. He's yeah. running, running laps with the team. Like, is there something that stands out story-wise from him that just kind of embodies his competitiveness? Yeah. I think that, you know, him throwing, <laughs> him throwing around in practice with all time. Like that's like one of those that you'll, you'll never forget. That was, Funny that our again our video team is pretty clever and pretty good with that stuff like putting that together like a highlight tape of him like throwing in practice, which is pretty cool. Um, but honestly, the most impressive thing is just like his energy every day through and through. Like he never misses a day. He always even after whether it be a loss or a great game, a great win, like coming off of like we're coming off of this week, it's the same energy no matter what, and he brings it and he brings it every day. So that's that was the most like. I wouldn't even say surprising, but the most appreciated thing on my end is like from coming from a head coach is just like every day consistently bringing that energy and bringing that juice for the team so that regardless of what situation it is, whether it be coming off of a tough game or a great game, we're rolling right back into the next week and feeling good. So uh, we'll end with a couple more lighthearted segments. Uh, okay. I believe it was you said once on Twitter that uh, Drake is, is the GOAT. Obviously, we're Canadians, so He's uh, uh, very, very big here. We always do on this show a segment called Three Downs, but we'll go to Four Downs now, being the okay. with the NFL. Okay. Top four Drake songs. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Um, number one off the top is Look What You've Done. Uh, that's one of my what's, that's one of my all-time favorites. Um, True Love, I love that song. Uh, Headlines is a classic. These are some of his older songs. And then fourth one that might be tough. Uh, dude, I, I really liked laugh now, cry later. Uh, that was one of my, that was one of my songs that, that uh, I liked to his, that was of, of recent also, but all of his, throw, all of his like early on stuff is bangers. It's, it's, it's timeless. So you can always go back to that. So I'll always be a huge, a huge Drake guy. Love it. Love it. I think there there are so many. Obviously, being in Toronto, it's like that. Yeah. We we are enamored by Drake, and so yeah, the <laughs> album release. We we're all waiting for the album to come out, and then it didn't come out, and then it came out. So we're we're all in the drama on Drake. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Um, lastly, before we uh, before we let you go, I feel like audibles as far as just people using different things for audibles like quarterbacks using so like we saw josh allen last week like jr smith and lebron james for audible so going back through your football career what is your favorite audible we're in the huddle what's just your favorite name of an audible or even if it wasn't a name of an audible just an audible you loved having called on the line just like oh, okay we're going to this now like this is going to be great uh i don't know if i have any crazy <laughs> like crazy crazy ones but my my favorite one is always an Omaha check, just because that's where I'm from. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, so it just always brings good vibes back to me and and makes me makes me smile a little bit. That that I mean Peyton Manning at the time put him on the put Omaha on the map a little bit, but <laughs> that's usually always my favorite one. It's you know it's not probably doesn't have that much meaning to anybody else, but I I always like it so. Shout out to the 402. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Noah, thanks so much for giving us your time today, and uh, we wish you the best of luck this season. Keep doing your thing and keep building that tight end position up. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys.